put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. The Wolverine Movie View in 3D, I guess. Yeah, it's a post-conversion and you can't see it really. There's watch the movie, but don't go for 3D. There's there's no reason for it. Anyway, Wolverine is world weary, war weary, and uh, other W weary words at this point. Taking place after X Men: The Last Stand, not retconning neither that nor Origins. Logan sure is a trooper. He he really he really does put up with a lot of pain to to get to yeah. Anyway, taking place after the last stand, the X Men have sort of disbanded. Gene is gone. There's not really a lot left for Logan, other than evidently, as we find out early, protecting large piles of CGI. Yes, you'll see. When he is found by Yukio, the badass Japanese 20-something girl who's like, she's described as literally having almost jumped right out of an anime and into this movie. I can definitely see that. She's, she's got a little bit of that, you know, the, the schoolgirl assassin psycho from Kill Bill Volume 1. A little bit of that thing going. She, she like smiles when she knows she gets to kick ass and she's just... Yeah, she's, she's all kinds of awesome. I, I would watch if they devoted an entire trilogy to her character. She finds Logan and starts the trend of strong female characters in this movie filming Wolverine on smartphones. I don't know if it's just product placement or if there's something I'm missing, but anyway. She invites him to Japan to say goodbye to the dying Yashida. I really hope I don't mess up too many of the Japanese names in this. Who he saved from... What's that name? You know, one of the two only nuclear bombs used in warfare. Nagasaki, that's the one where Wolverine saved the life of Yashida. And <laughs> Wolverine takes a little cajoling. He's he's not immediately happy about this whole Japan trip thing. And the fanboys in the audience patiently wait out Yukio talking him into it. We've seen the trailer, dude. We know it's going to... We know where this is headed. So he goes to Japan and Yoshida reveals he isn't only... You know, this is not only to, to, to say goodbye and to, to thank him, thank the Wolverine for saving his life. He wants to repay him. And we are introduced to the theme of his immortality a blessing or a curse. Because Wolverine at this point kind of feels like every woman he loves dies from him. Jean and yes, again, not retconning origins. I, yeah. Anyway, so 
yeah, you kind of get into is is it actually truly a a good thing to go on living forever? And along the way, he also faces his inner demons, and this is where Gene comes back in. Fauci Jensen did shoot new scenes for this, and. I don't think I should really give away exactly what they are, but I personally found them to be tremendously well done. It was a great device for this film. And so to, to finish off the plot summary, basically Yoshida's granddaughter, Mariko, is being targeted. And as Yoshida is the, you know, presumably because Yoshida is the head of, strangely enough, Yoshida Industries, a, the, the largest Japanese, you know, firm. I'm not sure it said exactly what it is they do, but they're, they're big and, and Japanese. So, yeah, that might be why she's she's being targeted. So Wolverine goes, you know, he tries to protect her, and thus we have our adaptation of the Japanese saga. I don't think I ever read the Japanese saga, but the 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 plot synopsis that I read. It seems to be, it, it gets a lot of stuff basically right, as far as I can tell. Like, this does not do the... Uh, Wolverine Origins was basically a kick to the nads, as far as adapting a beloved Wolverine story. In fact, that one it kind of, you know, it, it very efficiently just slaughters several uh, well-loved Wolverine stories. This one, from what I can tell, does m fares much, much better. Now, this has a little bit of genre schizophrenia going on. There's a... The movie is essentially a a character study of Logan, and somewhere in there, a, a, a man who just happens to be a mutant with with you know steel claws. That's that's really, and and in there somewhere is a you know summer blockbuster superhero flick, desperately clawing to get out, and every so often it will manage to. But then Logan pushes it back down and makes room for some brooding. Now, brooding has gotten a bit of a bad rep in recent movies because it's really common, especially in these, you know, whenever we have a strong male hero in, in recent movies, he broods. He broods a lot and it gets really tiring. Here it actually I would say it works out rather well. I've, I've seen that some reviewers really didn't care for it. I don't know, I guess if you don't already really like the character of Wolverine, this movie isn't really going to sell you on him. But if you do like him, I personally love him. You know, movie version and comic version. Yeah, I'd say it satisfies the fans, and I'd also really like to note, as I've already alluded to somewhat, this is a bit of a standalone. This is really about Wolverine. We finally shed all of the, <laughs> the extensive ensemble cast that dragged down the other movies. I'm not saying the other movies should have been about Logan. I'm saying they should have been about Characters. They shouldn't have had more characters than they could handle, and they kind of all did. 
E even first class, though that one got close, that one actually had characterization for a lot of characters. But my biggest problem with X Men is one and two. Three figured out new problems to add to it, but anyway, the biggest problem I find with X Men one and two, and I don't even start on origins. I, I already did videos for all of them, so if you, yeah. X Men one and two just has too many characters, and several of them have nothing to do. And I'm not just talking about like, oh, not all of them get, you know, there, there are little hints, you know, Iceman isn't a huge part of X-Men 1. No, I'm talking about like Cyclops in all three X-Men movies has nothing to do. He's basically there for there to be a love triangle. You know, he's, he's present in the love triangle. You know, Logan and Jean actually have characters. Anyway, yes, this one gets rid of that. And we get a proper solo outing, and it's actually, it's a standalone story. There is, like I've said, this one doesn't ignore the other films, but it's also just really not busy setting up more movies, you know, except, stay after the credits. It's, it's not about that, it's, it, it does, the, the, yeah, but I think, it's been a while since I was really deep in comic lore, but I think it's what you might refer to as a one-shot. One-off story, these characters, these, you know, well, these supporting characters, this, you know, Wolverine is still the central figure here, but yeah, it's, it's a separate story, and it's, it doesn't sequel bait for itself. That is really, really gratifying. I'm, I'm really happy that it's just, it's, it's actually a close-off story that, and because of that, it can delve into Logan's psyche, and he's worth it. He's, he's actually a good enough, a, a deep enough character that we really get something out of delving deep into him. Now, I do want to say something that I feel, some complaints have been that like, you know, it's, there's too little action or there's too, there is less action than maybe some of the other movies, but it's not to the extent, I'd, I'd say that the bigger problem with the action is like I said, the, the genre of schizophrenia, where it'll suddenly become something completely different. Very suddenly. That's kind of more the issue. And, and Wolverine definitely is still very much of a badass. The, the, the opening... Yeah, the first couple of scenes, he's seriously badass. I... I'm not going to give away exactly what he does, but yeah, it, it got a positive reaction from my audience. I will, I will definitely, the, the audience I saw it with. I'd also really like to note, this does have humor. This is not like, you know, Man of Steel has a bit, you know, is a bit too... Yeah, there's, there's not a ton of humor in that one. This one has a, a pretty good bit of, of humor. It's, it's kind of the Terminator 2 humor, where we, we get ironic perspectives on the... the yeah, some, some ironic stuff with this seriously badass major character. And it works, you know. Nobody said Terminator 2, not Terminator 3. They're not making fun of Wolverine. They are just, yeah, it's, it's this stuff of, you know, he is a badass, and sometimes the badass thing, yeah. They, they did it quite well, I, I felt. Now, with this being a, a you know, very much a thing of, <coughs> excuse me, a, a character study. 
I suppose I should go into the... Aronofsky was going to direct this and eventually left and it, it there are there's the possibility, let's go with that, that this was because he would not get to do an R rating. And yeah, the, the Aronofsky does you can't really imagine an Aronofsky picture without an R rating. With that said, this <laughs> This is PG-13, but I'm really surprised that it's PG-13. It's brutal. There's a tremendous amount of violence, and there is more blood than you might think. There's... yeah, go into this movie. Don't, don't think that this is like just... Yeah, that this, this gets rid of the... That part of the allure of the character of Wolverine, he's he's still very much an, an animal, and there is, yeah, these these visceral scenes of horrifying things are part of his universe. Now, you can very much tell that Aronofsky worked on this. It is a lot of the character study has these, these elements that you'd expect from Aronofsky. Now, th the... <coughs> part of the, part of the uh, appeal of the, of the original story is, of course, this stranger in a strange land kind of thing where Wolverine is in this country of honor and tradition and customs when he's kind of anti-authority person and this gets that pretty pretty well without it feeling it, it fits basically and which which actually I suppose that brings me to the one of the more frustrating things about this film is that a lot of the elements by themselves are great, but they don't form a cohesive whole. Um, now I'm sounding like a cohesive whole. It just... I hate to say it, but it, it doesn't all fit together quite as well. Now, yes, there's there's obviously some some character stuff to to get into the Mariko, who I already mentioned, the the granddaughter of Yoshida, is one of the strong female characters in this. I'd, I'd actually. I basically say that every female character in this is strong. Not all quite equally, and there there is. It's not that Logan is is not at all necessary to save others, but they don't really. There is some objectification going on, but they're not just there to to have someone to rescue for the guys. And this is actually, this film takes several big risks. Doesn't quite go all the way, but takes several big risks in setting it in Japan. The cast being made up of mostly Japanese folk and most of the supporting cast are women. And it really pays off on all fronts, I would say to further the the the, the, the characters Viper another female character and apparently one of the few people who watched Emma Frost in first class and said well that's nothing I could non out act that woman any day She's, she's the one bad performance in the movie, really. Otherwise, everyone's pretty much great. 
anyway, she has a... I don't want to give too much away about her, because a lot of this is twists, which it won't be surprising to the, the comic fans, but she is... She's a bit cold and distant. Let's let's go with that. And there's definitely something to her that, yeah, she's she's a better written character than than the yeah than the acting quite. Now, Silver Samurai is in this. It's not completely what you'd expect. I've seen some people say that Solo Samurai gets the, the Mandarin in this movie, you know, Iron Man 3, Iron Mandarin. I wholeheartedly disagree. They do not go anywhere near that far. But, yeah, it, just keep in mind this is, not, this is not going to be the Silver Samurai you've read about. Not quite. Now, the... There's uh, and, and there, there is Shingen, the son of Yashida, and he he's very bound up in this honor thing, and that has that also goes for Harada, who I'm not gonna give away exactly what he is or what he does because. It's sort of a twist. That's something this movie does really well. Set up and pay off. There are a lot of little lines and little things in the movie that you kind of... It's, you don't put a tremendous amount of stock in them at, at first. You just think, oh, that's, yeah, okay, fine. Next thing. And then later, when you sort of... You know, either while you're watching the movie or after you've watched the movie, you go back and you're like, Oh, that bit actually meant that. Oh, that makes sense. Until the third act, actually, where the plot implodes upon itself and up is down and down is up. And story gets just mangled. In, which I suppose is, yeah, Mangold. It, it gets Mangold. <laughs> That's not fair. He's done good movies. This one included. No, he, it, it just, <laughs> it's two-thirds of a great movie. And, it, but, but yes, there's, there's a lot of really subtle hints at what's really going on. And... In, if, near the end, I would say that some of that also backfires in that some of what is revealed later, some of what is hinted at, should have just been revealed up front. It would have been more effective that way, and a lot of people are going to be... to, to see what I mean the moment they... yeah, once you've seen the movie, you, you might know what I mean about that. Now, I... I personally feel that the character relationships are quite strong in the movie. There's a lot going on. Actually, that is one thing I could say about Harada. He and Mariko were childhood friends, and there's... Yeah, there's, there's a very clear connection there. And Yukio is also... connected with... Mariko in, in a way, I'm not going to give away exactly how, and yeah, with this you have these, some, something I sort of noticed thinking back on, on this movie, there are a lot of scenes of character A talking to character B, and then character B talking to character C, then maybe character C will talk to character A, they will there were scenes in this where I was like, I really miss, like, you might have already, I missed Yukio, I really wanted Yukio to come back, and that's not a bad thing, that means that they got me really into Yukio, and, you know, you gotta leave them wanting more, that's, that's a good way to approach storytelling, if the, 
if the audience is like, yeah, but more about that, that's, that's a good thing, that's not a bad thing. It, if, if we feel like we got everything, then we're not, you know, gonna come back for another one, maybe. Anyway, they, they space out the different uh, characters. Every, everybody gets some moments to shine, some moments where they really show what kind of person they are. And they will interact with someone to show the relationship between those two characters and to reveal some things. It's fairly efficient in that way. I, there's not really much of anything that's wasted in the movie. The, the dialogue, by the way, is also fairly well written. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. And I suppose... It's also, it's very nice that it's not the end of the world that's at stake in this movie. It's, it's, it is this more personal movie where that's also... Yeah, it, it gets a little tiring when every single superhero story is, you know, the end of the world. Yes, that happens in comics, but not every issue. That's the, these are the things that are, are like big, that get built up to, that take several issues to get into. And in this, <coughs> excuse me, in this we have that more personal, small story. Now, the climax is okay, but not really like the best action scene. Or the, the, the bullet train sequence is probably the best action scene. That, that is, is really, really cool. And, and yes, they, they probably had like a you know, set of bullet points of, you know, what's cool about Japan. Let's put that in this movie. And yes, I suppose that does bring me nicely into the, the action. It's the the choreography is pretty good. The camera work is less so. It's very shaky and it it gets confusing. It's it's the at times at least it's it's the confusing kind of shaky cam where you're like wait who is where and what exactly is going on there and. Yeah, I I will say that at points they definitely did accomplish what I understand the Mangold very much wanted to accomplish, which is which is this more the intensity and physicality of these fights, where you really feel, you know, blows to the body hurt, and yeah, you feel like these people are colliding. It's not just, it's not choreography. It's, it's not a dance, it's not for show, these people are fighting to the death. And when it accomplishes that, it works well, I would definitely say. Now, I think that... Yeah, that more or less covers it. The movie is 115 minutes not counting the end credits, and it's quite well paced. The movie never really loses you. It's, like I've said, it's not really constantly edge of your seat, but it's always engaging. And, yeah, it's, it's... And, and yeah, again, it is more the drama that's affected than overall the action. I would say. It does also, it implements several elements of, of these, you know, Japanese, of, of Japanese cinema. It has these, you know, the, the Yakuza noir tale, the, the, these, you know, yeah, I, I maybe shouldn't, well, yeah, you know from the, there's, there's some samurai and ninja stuff going on as well, yeah. And I suppose...
suppose that's one or less one I should say. I'd also like to say some of the action does get right this mano a mano thing of where yeah, it's it's not that you know Wolverine just plows through masses of faceless goons because that again that is fun for a while but it's not the only thing we want and when it gets more personal is when it's more effective and there are several personal effective mano a mano battles in this that yeah that that works quite well and There, there is this thing of the... I, sh I should maybe also say about the plot. It, it gets... It's only in the third act that it really gets, like, confusing, and there, there are plot points that are dropped, and there's just not quite... It doesn't all add up. When, when you've watched the entire movie and you think back to it, <laughs> Before you post, oh my god, this was the greatest movie ever, think, try to see if the whole plot makes sense once you, once you take everything into account. Sadly, with, with the third act, it does somewhat fall apart. But before that, it really does... Yeah, it, it, it has you... You know, you're, you're on every single plot point and you're... you're you're excited to find out what's, what more is really going on, and it all seems to make sense. It all seems to be building towards something. Which, again, was the, an implosion. There, there is a, a recurring image in this of Logan waking up, and you're not exactly sure. It's it's very Twilight Zone or Outer Limits. You're not exactly sure where he is and or what exactly is going on. And again, much the, the Aronofsky thing, there are times in this movie where you really stop and think, what is actually, what is, what is happening here? Now this doesn't take over the movie and that's maybe where they should have either completely gone you know, gone gone the whole way, but or or you know, they just did. But as a, as an element, it is quite effective, and it doesn't. You know, you still get to see Wolverine. You know, take on enemies and kind of. Yeah, you you still get what you might expect from. A, a summer blockbuster called Wolverine. I think that pretty much covers it. Yes, I, I will actually I will close off by saying at times the action does get kind of tedious, especially in the third act. It gets to be this sort of Michael Bay-ish, just keeps going. It it doesn't it doesn't go on forever in this movie at, at any point. There, there's, I don't think there's too much action in this movie. It, I'd say the, the amount of action is basically fine. But there are times when the action just feels like it just kind of keeps going without needing to. And yeah, it's it, it ceases to be creative. It's just uh, yeah. So yeah, it's it's it is a mixed bag, but there's just so much good stuff in there that if, that that you really should watch it again if you already like the character, or if you are looking to get into this universe and you're gonna do so through a movie, I'd say start with this one. Watch this before any of the other X-Men movies because all of the other ones just
kind of do dump a bunch of X-Men on you and numerous concepts where this just takes you deep into this one character and yes, frankly, you will be able to follow this movie without having watched the other ones because it does set up everything you need to know. There's nothing that goes unexplained. Like, I've mentioned Jean. She's explained in the movie. They don't... <laughs> it's, it's not this thing of, uh, you know... It actually... Really, if there is anyone out there who, who is in this situation, watch this movie and then, like, share with the rest of us exactly what it was like. Because, frankly, if you go into this movie not knowing what came before, it's going to be a different movie, and I think it's going to be a very interesting experience for you. I'm, I'm really glad they did it this way. But yeah, it does really tell you everything you need to know. And to close off my metaphor of the grab bag, the overall, the, the, the mixed bag, the overall you know, when you take all the elements in, it is worth it. It's, it doesn't, you know, it does some things fairly wrong, but what you end up with is well worth watching. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.